One of the earliest examples of the idea of canceling in popular culture is the 1981 song, Your Love is Canceled. I've been interested in digital culture from like a more activist perspective. Eve Ung traces the lineage of cancel culture in her book, Cancel Culture, A Critical Analysis. Like many other people, you know, I watched with a lot of interest Black Lives Matter, the Me Too movement, and the impact that had on prominent figures. Ung is a professor in the School of Media, Arts, and Studies at Ohio University. She says that a decade after that song came out, a screenwriter named Barry Michael Cooper was working on a script for the crime drama New Jack City when the song was playing on the radio. When the movie premiered in 1991, the idea of canceling people made its film debut. You have like recognizable stars, right? Like Wesley Snipes is the lead character. And so he's breaking up with a girlfriend in a horrible way. You're a murderer, Nino! I've seen you kill too many people, Nino! Cancel that uh, I'll buy it. <laughs> but Twitter really gave this idea of canceling new life. In 2009, Twitter formally adopted hashtags. So that's when like, people started using hashtags on Twitter saying you're canceled. For a while, the phrase was used in a kind of playful way, but then people started using it to call people out for problematic or inappropriate behavior. This is who's attacking me now. One of the earlier examples took place in 2014. The dark forces trying to silence my message of core conservative principles mixed with youth-friendly product placement have been thwarted. Stephen Colbert had riffed on a new foundation started by the owner of Washington's NFL team, the Redskins Original Americans Foundation. Colbert was trying to point out the ridiculousness of the owner of a team called the Redskins starting a group to help Native Americans. I was so inspired by Dan Snyder's charitable outreach that I formed my own charity, the Ching Chong Ding Dong Foundation for Sensitivity to Orientals or whatever. The Colbert Report Twitter account sent out a tweet about his new make-believe charity, prompting an activist to tweet back, hashtag cancel Colbert, trend it. The activist behind the cancel Colbert tweet soon started getting harassed and doxxed, her address and contact details posted publicly. Fast forward to 2017. We see figures like Harvey Weinstein being called out, you know, having to face the consequences. For him, it was actual sort of legal problems. For others, you know, like James Franco, Louis C.K., it was more what we think of as cancelling, social media cancelling, like I'm not following anymore. First they outlawed Dr. Seuss, and now they want to tell us what to say. Jerry Seinfeld doesn't tell comedy anymore because any joke that's funny is cancelled. Ung says 2020 was the watershed year of cancel culture's conservative backlash. 2020 was the year of Black Lives Matter sort of re-emerging in the light of the George Floyd protests. Um, and those protests, as we know, weren't just about police violence. It really expanded into a more um, significant critique of race and inequality in the U.S. Some shows about police, like Cops, were literally canceled by their networks, temporarily. HBO temporarily pulled Gone with the Wind. Conservatives were angry. And people are still talking about cancel culture. In her book, Ong doesn't say whether the phenomenon is good or bad. The take home point for me is always not everything that looks like a cancel event is the same. We have to look at the context, like who is being canceled, who's doing the canceling, what are the reasons for the canceling, and what are the sort of power dynamics involved. That nuanced way of thinking may not fit with the often knee-jerk mob ethos of the internet, but no one is going to cancel someone for their thoughtful, critical analysis, right? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. For Philosophy Talk, I'm Holly J. McDeed.